know, guys. All right, you already know that the planetary convergence ends on uh, December the 4th, and we told you guys that the, the convergence of the star system began December 14th. We gotta understand, understand, overstand what is taking place. Right now, we are, uh, the, the great celestial event is reaching our planet, is soon to be here, very soon, so we have to prepare ourselves for, um, something big and powerful, and we're looking at a fall, I mean, it's, uh, literally, it's going to be a fall of so much, and, and we have been accustomed to this type of living, by these inorganic beings, they have literally caused us to be accustomed to a life that we're not supposed to be uh, being used to. You know, money and, and things and positions and, you know, they, they have literally t- taken so many, so many of us out of balance. Alright, so the uh, planetary convergence is right now until December the 4th, that will be 180 days until December the 4th, all right, and what we're looking at, like we said last night, um, all of the realms are now coming together, but there is a more powerful convergence that will be coming after the December 4th, which will be your, um, um, the convergence of the star system, star system convergence, star system convergence is very important because this is bringing the star systems together, but as the star systems come together, they're bringing the planets together, so it's like a, it's, it's like, um, if you can imagine, um, a bunch of snowflakes, I'm going to have to write out the, di- the, gr- the diagram, but a bunch of snowflakes just laying down, and you know, each snowflake has a different shape, all right, and that's just like the star system, each star system has a different shape, but then they have a, a line going from one snowflake to the other one, to the other, connecting each other, remember, a line uh, represents one point of energy to another point of energy. Well, this is a guy, Jordan Peterson, he's a Canadian. And he talks about, he says, he talks about our day. And Trump was a tough man. But he says, watch what the weak man will do. A harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. And this guy, Biden, is the worst I have ever seen. The man is Sinai. And today what's happening is Russia and China are now ganging up on the U.S. It's really a dangerous world right now. It's getting worse. I mean, when Trump was in power, I was a bit optimistic. As we all know, America produces nothing anymore. We produce bubbles, you know, we just blow air bubbles. So we now have this bubble in real estate and stocks and bonds and and then when Biden took the Keystone Pipeline, XL Pipeline off the, just wiped us out here. Inflation goes up and the average American doesn't have a thousand bucks. 40% of Americans don't have a thousand bucks. And so when inflation goes up, we're gonna wipe out 50% of the US population. And that is when revolution starts. And, and so, if and when, and it will come down, the stock market crashes, the 401k, the old guys like me are toast. You know, we don't have a retirement. Our pensions are bust. So what we have with three things is our treasury is out of control. We've lost it. Our entitlements out of control. And now we're at war with the Defense Department. So our debt to GDP is out. We've got to know what's real today. And that's why I'm saying we have the weak leadership in world history. America's in serious trouble. So I want to find out what's real. And China and Russia are now ganging up on us. We went to Venezuela and Iran to buy oil from them. And this guy Biden cuts off oil supply. So I'm just saying that we're in serious trouble. Serious, serious. And it's getting worse. That's, that's what terrifies me. Well, always remember, America has stopped producing products. We produce bubbles. Now, the good thing about a bubble is when they burst, everything goes on sale. And so when things, when 2008, 
I waited till about 2010. I borrowed 300 million because the debt is money, as you know, after 71. And I began buying real estate at bargain prices. So just recently, the repo market inverted again, which means we're going down. It means recessions ahead. But my concern is now revolution, because when people can't afford to eat tuna, we're going to have rioting. So it's a whole different type of bubble burst. When Biden took us off the pipeline, oil prices went up, oil produces fertilizer. And when fertilizer is no longer cheap, people can't produce food. And the average American has nothing, 40% of Americans have nothing. Inflation is going to make them very upset. A stock market crash will bring down the baby boomers. So we're in serious, serious trouble here. So I'm just being ridiculous in my tweets because it's better than listening to Biden that I'd rather have a can of tuna right now. That's what I'm saying is that at least I can eat it. It's the end of America. They're inside our government. They're inside our school system. They're inside Hollywood and they're inside Silicon Valley. And that's why I wrote this book here, The Capitalist Manifesto. I said, we've got to fight back. And we fight back with information and education, not weapons. And as Jordan Peterson said, he says, if you think tough men are dangerous, just watch what weak men can do. And we're watching the weakest president, I think, in, in my time. I mean, Carter was pretty weak. But this guy, Biden, is calm. Oh, my God. She's next in line and Pelosi's next in line, so God help me. That's Biden's best insurance policy he's got. Because you get, you get Kamala and you get, you get uh, Nancy Pelosi as next in, in office. When Biden cut down the XL pipeline, he made me a rich man because oil went from $30 a barrel to 130 barrels a barrel. I produce oil, I produce gold, I produce silver, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't play the stock market. But I am concerned about my fellow human being. I don't care what you are, white, left, pink, green, pink. I am concerned because 50% of Americans are broke. Inflation is going to wipe us out. You to eat bugs. What to feed our ever expanding world? Insects. They could be. They want you to eat bugs. What to feed our ever expanding world? Insects. They could be. They want you to eat bugs. What to feed our ever expanding world? Insects. They could be world. Healthy. They're full of polyunsaturated fat, protein, and micronutrients. And sustainable. I'm the cook man, and I am going to eat all course meal of bugs. And they want you to eat these bugs inside a massive prison system that sees humanity as a cancer upon the earth. For too long, humanity has existed within dysfunctional and polluted cities that ignore nature. Now, a revolution in civilization is taking place. Imagine a traditional city consolidating its footprint, designing to protect and enhance nature. The line will be home to 9 million residents and will be built with a footprint of just 34 square kilometers. And we are designing it to provide a healthier, more sustainable quality of life. The Lions communities are organized in three dimensions. Residents have access to all their daily needs within five-minute walk neighborhoods. And the Lions infrastructure makes it possible to travel end-to-end -end in 20 minutes with no need for cars, resulting in zero carbon emissions. It is all completely bizarre, but it's just a cover story, and it's just getting started. There is a whole cultural movement now emerging from the shadows that wants humanity to collectively commit. This anti-human cult has been around for decades, and outside of academia, has had to tread quietly because much of humanity is opposed to that. But now that we are in the midst of this cult's massive depopulation effort, they are coming out into the open to convince us that it would be best for most of us to die. We cannot hide away from human population growth because, you know, it underlines so many of the other problems. All these things we talk about wouldn't be a problem if there, were, if there was the size of population that there was 500 years ago. All the religious groups are against me because I'm talking about population. They want more souls. I want less of planet. <laughs> <laughs> the world 
economic forum has become the public domain of the anti-human cults depopulation agenda. And all of pop culture is on board, from Hollywood to the Holy See, to the planet, uh, the utopia that we've been given, the overpopulation. Their agenda is disguised as environmentalism, so that all who oppose it now can be shamed. And when the mass starvation begins to overwhelm the population, the sentimental environmentalists can all be blamed. Because, of course, this has nothing to do with the environment. Boris Johnson's father, Stanley Johnson, is a member of this cult. But he wrote that the world's population needs to be cut down to a more manageable number. And this is what it's all about, a more manageable number. Because these psychopaths see the rest of us as their property to manage and cull accordingly. But humanity still has a choice, and we don't have to die in a prison death factory eating bugs. We could choose freedom, but time is running out. It's supposed to be coming and hitting Earth today. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I didn't hear about it, you all. Asteroids back to back approaching Earth. Someone wrote in the comment section, Gina, what about that asteroid that's supposed to be coming and hitting Earth today? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I didn't hear about it, you all. And um, hello. Asteroids back to back approaching Earth. Someone wrote in the comment section, Gina, what about that asteroid that's supposed to be coming and hitting Earth today? And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I didn't hear about it, you all. It's like 120 feet uh, airplane size. Uh, but look at the date. So that's July the 30th, um, August the 1st, August the 1st, about the size of a house, about the size of an airplane, August the 3rd. Um, stadium size, that's pretty big. How can that... That's only seven, that's 700 feet, and that's on August the 4th. But if that's a stadium size, this is 600 feet. You know, what if these are something different? Well, I, I think something is going on, is what I'd like to say. Hello, I think something is going on, because look at the observatories. Look at the observatories today. Let me flip it around. Look at the timestamp on it last night. Just like this. I've been recording it, and... Um, this only lasts for so long, and then the whole area, I might as well pause it. The whole area, let's see, let me pause it. This is what the area looked like yesterday. We can get it like that, you all. If it would quit playing around on me, just because I flipped it over there, you all. That's why there's a lot of um, cloud covering taking place. Oh, this don't even want to work. Look, look what it's doing to me. Okay, now this was the observatories. This is the observatories all day yesterday. So you know there's something's going up because we can't see nothing at the observatories. Not, I don't see nothing. I don't. I don't even know the name of it. Okay, 531944. But just suppose that if this is a 600 foot uh, size asteroid, what if it's a massive, massive like mothership that's coming uh, on July the 30th? And then what if this is just like a smaller ship since they're basing this like 120 feet, just like a little ship uh, that's coming tomorrow. And then this one's a house, maybe another ship. Um, but look at the distance away from Earth, they're saying, just like that. So why would they want to draw attention to this kind of stuff right here? This one right here, the size of a stadium uh, on August the 5th. Uh, my name is Luis. Today is August 3rd, 2022. And welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates. And guys, we have some huge information coming out. Very important stuff here. The Red Dragon seems like they're going to be launching some missiles. The Bear is going to get involved. They offer military aid to the Red Dragon. Now, here's the thing, guys. The bear is going to get involved, but I believe their job is to stop the Japanese. Because, again, guys, the Japanese are going to get involved if the Red Dragon strikes or invade the island. Now, let me show you something really quick here. Give me a second. Let me just scroll down. Show you something here. 
do me a favor, please share the video if you can. So the exercise is unprecedented as controversial, contra, uh, conventional, excuse me, missiles are expected to fly over the island for the first time. Now you have... Look, nothing in the sky at all. Then all of a sudden... Bam! What is that? Anybody tell me what that is? We're in the middle of the ocean. On a ferry. Nothing around. What? Nothing around. No land, no nothing. and some bad news first the good news you guys you will get to be some of the first people to be informed about the bad news the bad news is we have a potential problem breeding in the background and that and I'll just come out and say it is a bug problem now it's not here yet well it is but the real problem is on the way. I believe that when you are faced with a potential threat or challenge, it is probably good to know everything you can about it. The weird thing about all this is that I'm about to talk about something that we have looked at recently, and that is the propagation of eating insects. And you have mostly seen this done with things like mealworms and grasshoppers or crickets. Well, friends, it turns out we are going to have plenty to eat after all. Because there is a new type of cricket that may be headed to a town near you. What the heck is the latest Hudson Valley monstrosity? Spider crickets. What the heck are they? I've heard of spiders, I've heard of crickets, but until a few days ago, I had never heard of spider crickets. And I'd never seen one either. I was okay without knowing, but now it's too late. Apparently, spider crickets are the latest insect that everybody's talking about. And we've got them right here in the Hudson Valley. I personally know somebody who found one in her Hudson Valley home. I remember when I was very young, I lived in a small house out in the rural areas. Of, but when you come across one, they do resemble a spider. When you go to catch it or squish it, they jump. I just thought they were some type of jumping spider. Trust me, they are not something you want in your house. So, we've talked about this before. The great bug invasion, right? And we've seen these types of occurrences in previous years leading up to this. With locusts, stink bugs, cicadas. And this year is apparently the year of the cricket. And... At least here in the U.S., there are two major species to look out for. The spider cricket and the Mormon cricket. They are already dealing with these swarms out west big time. We know that a plague is defined as a contagious disease, right? But a plague is also defined as a large swarm of insects. That is why the plague horseman brings both disease and bugs. This was published by the Farmer's Almanac, July 7, 2022. Spider crickets are real, and here's why you don't want them in your home. These critters may try to make their way into your home this fall. Here's how to keep these pests out without harsh chemicals. What are spider crickets? These critters go by lots of names, but spider cricket is one of the most common because they resemble spiders. Their official name is Raphidorphoridae. They are also known as criters, 
Spriggets. Cave uh, cave crickets. Camelback crickets. Or camel crickets. And because they look so much like spiders, they're definitely scary to anyone who's not a fan. Worse, they often congregate in large groups, which can make for a terrifying sight if you happen to enter a place where a few are roaming around. But these bugs, even if they are creepy and crawly, are for the most part harmless. However, you don't want them in your home because of the damage they can do. At first glance, these spider crickets do look like spiders, which is part of their defense. And if you get too close to them, they have the habit of jumping at you to scare you as another defense. Which is pretty creepy to know that this cricket is programmed to jump toward you instead of away from you like a grasshopper would. They don't have fangs or teeth, so they can't bite you. But they do have mandibles, so they can definitely gnaw on you if they land on you. When you are able to get close enough to identify it, you will notice, unlike spiders, they have very long antenna and only six legs, with the hind legs, of course, being much larger than the others. They don't have wings, and they have a hunchback shape. They can also get up to two inches long, whereas the Mormon cricket can get up to three inches long. Now, these spider crickets don't chirp. They just make noise with their jumping movements. The Farmer's Almanac describes it as the sound of popcorn poppy, because you have a few of these crickets jumping around and hitting the floor. The way these crickets attract mates is with smell. And see, the thing is, a regular house cricket, no problem. If you come across one of these spider crickets, I can almost guarantee you, even if you were told a thousand times that this is just a cricket, you'd probably still treat it like a spider. When I was a kid, I think I ran into them maybe three or four times when we first moved into that house in Virginia, Chesterfield County. And I always remembered those things and how I found one in the bathtub. Those crickets were killed. There was no catching them and letting them back outside. Nope. They were made an example of. I mean, it was the country. There were huge black and yellow garden spiders in the yard, along with frogs and snakes. We lived right next to a creek with a bunch of fruit trees, I think. They were mostly pear trees. And so, yeah, it was an experience. If you live in the U.S., they can be found throughout the country. So can Mormon crickets. And Mormon crickets are the ones that can swarm millions, if not billions. You can normally find spider crickets in the forest and in the caves, but with the weather and with the heating up of the earth from the inside, it is forcing more critters to surface. And that spills over into people's homes because these pests typically do end up in people's homes by accident. They are just attracted to dark, damp places like basements in the summer and fall seasons. Now, in the past, I used to raise crickets and mealworms. I had a bearded dragon to feed. And in my experience raising these things, if you don't have a garage or outdoor place to keep them, they stink. That's why people prefer to raise the worms instead of raising crickets that jump all over the place and stink up the place as well. From what I understand, these spider crickets like to congregate in numbers in basements, crawl spaces, garages, any place you would typically find insect pests. The biggest problem with these crickets is that they like to gnaw on things people have around the house. They'll chew on fabric, leaving holes in your clothes, rugs, carpets, cardboard. They can also be cannibalistic. They can be a problem for pets as well if your animals decide they want to crunch on some crickets. They could cause an upset stomach. Folks, don't feed your dog crickets. Despite what they say about it having health benefits, look, a dog's diet 
is not crickets. Now, if your dog is out in the yard and it decides it wants to eat a bug or two, no big deal. But dogs eat meat, bones, and stomachs. Dogs aren't lizards either. Do you see how far these people are willing to go with this insect protein? Trust me. That's what they are going to be telling you. That it's good for you. Poor doggy. Let me ask you something, folks. With all this talk about us eating these things like locusts, grasshoppers, and crickets, how do you gut a grasshopper? Do you slice it open and then remove the intestine and feces? Or does it all get ground up and mixed in with the meal? I can't be the only one considering these things. You know, there was a movie that Netflix put out called The Swarm. And they always have some agenda to push that you can see coming from a mile away. This is what they are known for, agenda flicks. This movie, The Swarm, it is about a single mom who breeds locusts for protein. She starts having trouble with getting them to reproduce. She's having trouble finding buyers at the price they want. So listen to this. This lady gets offended when she finds out that one of her buyers just wants to feed his animals with the stuff. And she gets all offended like, oh, my locust meal is only fit for humans how dare you feed my locust chunks to birds which by the way are what birds eat anyway if you're creeped out by bugs you probably don't want to watch this movie especially if you don't want to see a macro high definition shot of locust shedding its skin and eating its own skin close-ups of cannibalism what type of energy has to be running through a creature that makes it want to cannibalize other locusts and or itself? Keep in mind, food carries energy, folks. What type of cannibal energy are they trying to feed to people? Are you guys starting to get it?